What's up everyone, it's Mr. Jensen Tan back again with a short tutorial on isomerism. At the end of this video, I hope you are able to define what an isomer is, be able to draw and even name some isomers. Isomers are compounds with the same molecular formula but different structural formula. The early discovery of isomerism can be traced back to the days of this German chemist known as Friedrich Wuller. And he was trying to make this compound called ammonium cyanate in the lab, but instead he made urea. And he found that ammonium cyanate and urea, they had the same chemical formula, but very different chemical properties. Back then, it was believed that organic compounds could only be made in living things, but then his experiments disproved this belief. And this was where organic chemistry started. Organic compounds can exist as different isomers. In all levels, we deal with three kinds of structural isomerism, and we'll look at each of them one by one. The first kind is chain isomerism, the second, positional isomerism, and the third, functional group isomerism. When we draw structures for organic molecules, it is important to take note of the following points. Firstly, we must remember our chemical bonding rules, meaning that carbon forms four bonds, oxygen 2, hydrogen 1, and so forth. So for example, the following structures here will be invalid because carbon only has three bonds and hydrogen has two bonds. This will not be possible by chemical bonding given the number of valence electrons each of these elements have. The second important point is that structural isomers cannot be formed by just merely rotating the bonds. This is quite hard to imagine, given that molecules are three-dimensional and are flexible. What I've drawn here below are three molecules and they are actually the same molecule. They are not isomers. Okay, these are all butane. So if we look at the molecular model, it would be much clearer. So let's switch over and take a look at these structures. Over here, I have a molecular model that shows butane. There are four carbons represented by the black spheres, and 10 hydrogens represented by the orange spheres. It might look very different from what is drawn on paper because molecules are three-dimensional in nature. So naturally, the bonds will spread out as far as possible to minimize repulsion. I'm just going to rotate this down. Okay, and you can see it resembles the second diagram. Okay, I can also rotate this up and it gives sort of like an S shape. Okay, all these structures by just rotating the bonds, they are the same molecule because molecules are constantly moving. Alright, so this molecule here, if I were to look at it from this way, looks like the first one, right? So just by merely rotating bonds, we can't create isomers. So let me show you two isomers of butane. Okay, the one on the left is a straight chain, meaning that the carbon atoms are in one continuous line. And the one on the right is a branch chain, meaning that it looks like a T, letter T. So the longest possible chain I can have without lifting my finger is three carbon, either this way or the other way. Okay, so this is a branch molecule, but this is a straight chain one. And you would agree that it's not possible to convert this to this without breaking any of the bonds. Okay, so we say that these two, they are isomers of each other. And because of that, they differ in their physical properties. The straight chain butane has a larger surface area and therefore stronger intermolecular forces of attraction. This will lead to the straight chain alkene having a higher boiling point than the branch one. So how do we name a branch alkene like this? First, we look for the longest continuous chain, in this case is 3, and the name would therefore end with a propane, pro meaning 3 carbons. And then we look for any branches, so it branches out from the center, okay, if I would just plug this out, okay, we have a CH3, 
one C and three H's attached to the middle one. So a branch like this, one C and three H, we call it a methyl group. The name is derived from methane. Okay, and putting this here on carbon number two, the one in the middle, we will call it two methyl propane. All right, so that's the name you see here. So what I've drawn out here is called the full structural formula in which all the bonds are being shown. What is written down here is what we call the written structural formula. Okay, and how is this done? It is written from left to right. So one carbon at a time, CH3, CH2, CH2, CH3. Okay, and same on the right. From left to right, okay, CH3, CH and bracket CH3 followed by a CH3. Okay, it's just written from left to right. So this is much more condensed. Now let's move on to checkpoint one. Can you try to draw the isomers of pentane? Pause the video before we go over the answers. So let's do it in a systematic way, okay, using a molecular model. I've taken out the hydrogen so it'll be easier for us to focus on the carbon skeleton. The first isomer is always the straight chain molecule. Okay, so just the five carbons in a row. Okay, to get to the next isomer, we will pluck off one carbon from the end of the chain. So here. And this leaves us with the longest chain being four carbons. Now I'll put this carbon somewhere in the middle. I can't put it back on the end, otherwise it will result in the same molecule. I can't put it on this side either, so I have to put it in the middle. Okay, so I can put it over here. I have a methyl group okay, on the second carbon. We always count the carbons in the longest chain, 1, 2, 3, 4, using the smaller number, 2, instead of 1, 2, 3, 4, using a larger number, 3. Okay, so this would be a 2-methyl butane. Okay. What if I had plucked this out and put it here instead? It is also the same molecule because if I were to flip it over, it's still 2-methylbutane. Okay, so there is no other way I can do it. Okay, so if there are no other possibilities, you will pluck off another one carbon from the end. Okay, and slot it somewhere else. Okay, here I have a different molecule, another isomer. The longest chain is three carbons, and I have two methyl groups coming off the second one. So this will be called 2,2-dimethylpropane. Okay, so now I have placed the answers on the screen. You can check your answers. I will also like to further challenge you to draw the isomers of hexane in checkpoint number two. Once you are done, you can check the answers as well. I'm not going to focus so much on the naming of organic compounds because that's not very much in the syllabus. But if you are very interested, I encourage you to look up the rules. The second kind of isomerism is positional isomerism. This is when the functional group can be positioned at different parts of the carbon backbone. One of the reactions of alkanes is substitution. So when an alkane, like butane, undergoes reaction with bromine in the presence of UV light, we can replace one of the hydrogen atoms with a bromine atom. So if I choose to do substitution at the end carbon, I will get something like that. So always remember each carbon forming four bonds, the rest are hydrogen. So we always number the carbons one to four, always choosing the substituent on the smaller numbered carbon. So the name of this molecule would be called 1-bromobutane. We could also replace the hydrogens in the middle and this will give me yet another isomer. And as you might have guessed, this will be called 2 bromo 
butane. They are isomers because they have the same molecular formula but different structural formula. It is not possible to get this just by rotating the bonds. You need to break some bonds. Okay, let's try checkpoint 3. You may pause the video and give it a try first before I give you the answers. Okay, we'll draw butene first. Remember, each carbon has four lines coming out. The double bond is right at the end between carbon number 1 and number 2. So we'll call this but 1 in. It is possible to put the carbon carbon double bond elsewhere, like in the middle. Now the carbon carbon double bond is between number 2 and 3. So this is called but 2 in. So they are positional isomers because the functional group is on a different position. When we do addition of steam, we can add the H and OH across a double bond. So we'll break the double bond. We'll have an OH here and a H here. Okay, so this comes from the water molecule that is added H2O. Okay, we could also have this variation in which the H goes to the end and the OH comes in the middle. So this is propanol, right? To be specific, propen one or because the hydroxyl functional group is on carbon 1. And this is propen 2 or Okay, because the hydroxyl functional group is on carbon number 2. The last kind of structural isomerism is functional group isomerism. So here are two molecules. They are added to petrol. They have the molecular formula C2H6O. They are functional groups are different. This kind of isomerism is called functional group isomerism where you rearrange the molecules to totally change the functional group. Alkenes can also exhibit such kind of isomerism. What would be a functional group isomer of butene that doesn't contain the carbon-carbon double bond? This one requires a little bit of thinking out of the box. So we'll end up with something like that. Do you think it's possible? It satisfies the bonding rules, right? Carbon has four bonds, hydrogen has one. It has the same molecular formula as butene, C4H8, but a different structural formula and the double bond is gone. Okay, so we have a totally different molecule here. We call it cyclobutane. Okay, see if you can do the next one. An isomer of ethanoic acid. Let me draw the structure of ethanoic acid for you. Okay, we can rearrange it in this way while still satisfying the bonding rules. So on the left, we have the carboxyl functional group and on the right, the ester linkage. They are different functional groups. Okay, so this is also known as functional group isomerism. So now I hope you have a better idea of the different kinds of isomerism. Now I have one final challenge for you. Butanol can exhibit all three kinds, chain isomerism, functional group isomerism, and positional isomerism. And I'd like to challenge you to draw as many isomers as you can think of for butanol. So with that, that's all we have for today. Thanks for watching.